Greetings, everyone, and welcome to a sci-fi Blu-ray update today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Uh, just a short one this time, but I've watched all three of them, so yeah, I might have a couple things to say. I'm not going to go like all hardcore review on you, but I have a couple things to say. So uh, let's check them out. Three new sci-fi Blu-rays. Well, not terribly new. I've waited a long time to do this update, but new to you as far as it being in my collection now. So let's check them out today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. Okay, first up, I picked up Alita Battle Angel. Yeah, I can't actually remember why I got the 4K version. I think it's because the Blu-ray was out of stock and the 4K was only like a couple bucks more. So I thought, eh, what the hell, I'll get the 4K. I still don't have a 4K. 4 clay? <laughs> I don't have a 4 clay player and I don't have a 4 clay TV either. So... Hopefully, one of these days, and, you know, and this is actually probably a pretty good one to, to try it out on whenever I do get one. Uh, let's take a quick look at the packaging and the contents. Here we are, Alita Battle Angel. I don't remember if this even had a slipcover. Um, I, I was a little bit late to the party on this, uh, getting it when I did. Um, so, I don't recall... But uh, that's okay. I mean, it's uh, most of the time with these studio releases, it's just the same picture on the um, slipcover anyway. But uh, it's very nice. Let's crack it open here. Oh, no artwork whatsoever on the inside. But there's the uh, Ultra HD disc. And there's the regular Blu-ray. And then there's the 3D. And that's that. So, pretty simple. But I do like how they have different artwork for uh, for all three discs. That's kind of nice. A little bit more in the way of disc art than we often get on modern releases. And, uh, you know, there's a decent uh, selection of featurettes here about the making of the film. It's good stuff. I don't think there's a commentary, though. Is there... No, there's no uh, commentary. But, of course, directed by Robert Rodriguez. And it's actually a shame that there's no commentary because I've always found Robert Rodriguez's commentaries really interesting to listen to. He has such a genuine enthusiasm for film. It's uh, kind of infectious when you listen to his commentaries. Really good stuff. Anyway, there you go. So, yeah, we have a pretty decent selection of featurettes on there. Um, so I very much went into this cold. Uh... Rosie actually picked it out when we were trying to find a movie to watch. She says, oh, let's watch this one. I haven't seen this. And I'm like, oh, I haven't seen it either. Sure, I've heard it's really good. And uh, so Rosie and I watched it together for the first time, and both of us were just completely blown away, like, holy crap, that was so good. <laughs> um, was really quite impressed by, uh, you know, the, the CG of the main character and just the story and the characters and the emotion and the world of it all. I mean, it was just fantastic. Um, and I, I gotta say, hashtag Alita Army uh, would be really great if we got a sequel. Um, sadly, I guess that's not happening, uh, unfortunately, which, which is such a crying shame because, well, it leaves off the big cliffhanger, for one, but also just because it was such a wonderful film. I mean, it deserves to have at least two or three movies make a trilogy of it or something you know but um yeah absolutely loved this like just immediately just completely enraptured with it um such a fantastic film and um oh i see why i got it it's because this was the only way to get the 3d version <laughs> i just noticed that i probably mentioned that 
earlier as well. But anyway, um, I film these psych things out of sequence. I do all the chair parts, and then I do the close-up parts. And through the magic of editing, it all seems coherent. Anyway, um, yeah, I guess that's why I got the 4K version, because the 3D version wasn't available any other way. But uh, yeah, really liked this a lot. Did I mention I like this a lot? Yeah, well, I did. Anyway, next up, got the next chapter. Well, actually, a new chapter that ignores most of the subsequent chapters after the second one. Yes, after the second one. Did you think I was going to say Halloween? No. I talked about that in another update ages ago. Um, but this is another series that's kind of doing the same thing that Halloween is doing in that they're ignoring all the sequels and just kind of going off and doing their own thing. I'm, of course, talking about Terminator Dark Fate. Now, I gotta say, I, I did a video a while back when uh, Genesis came out, and I just kind of gave my general thoughts on the Terminator franchise as a whole. I've never really had a problem with the various sequels. I know some fans are, like, really spiteful of the sequels and just full of hate and venom for them. But I, they're not as good as the first two, but they're okay. Like, they're decent enough sci-fi actioners. Like, come on. I, I, don't, I don't know what everybody's problem is. But anyway, I enjoyed all the, all the sequels. Uh, really enjoyed um, the Sarah Connor Chronicles, the TV series. That one was awesome. And um, much how the Sarah Connor Chronicles kind of created its own timeline that spun off of the second one and ran parallel to the events of the, the other sequels... That's what this one does. It basically is a direct sequel to Terminator 2 and just kind of ignores everything else and goes off and creates yet another timeline. There's a lot of timelines in the Terminator chronology if you actually dig into it. But, um, yeah, I gotta say, I really like the direction they went with this. Uh, it was great to see Linda Hamilton back and, of course, Arnie's back. Uh, really liked the new characters. I thought they had some interesting ideas. Um, I, I like how... There were certain aspects that were familiar, but also with new twists on them, you know. Um, I don't want to give too much away for anyone who hasn't seen it. But um, very satisfying and entertaining sequel. I don't know if they're doing more in this timeline. I heard that that was kind of the idea. They wanted to do maybe a trilogy or something, but uh, uh, I don't know if that's still happening. I hope it is, because I really liked this one a lot. Um, let's take a look at the, the packaging and the extras here. And here we go, Terminator Dark Feet, or Somber Destin. That Somber Destiny movie, yeah. Features deleted scenes, action-packed featurettes, over an hour of bonus content. Yeah, that's actually not a lot of bonus content, but anyway, very nice. And, of course, we do have the slipcover here. Yeah, what did I just say about studio releases? Same artwork on both. The difference is we have, I don't know why you can see it, but we have some embossing on the, uh, you can't really pick it up. I'm trying to get the, yeah, you can't really pick it up. But anyway, there's some embossing on the title, but that's it. So this is a Paramount release, and yeah, there you go. That's pretty standard disc art for Paramount releases. Just plain DVD with gray. Blu-ray with blue, and that's literally it. You'll see that with so many Paramount releases. That's literally the one way they distinguish them from each other. <laughs> Gray for DVD, blue for Blu-ray. There we go. I don't actually know why I left that sticker on there. I usually take those stickers off. I'll probably remove that at some point. And there you go. So, I mean, it's it's not a bad selection of extras. It would have been nice to go a little more in-depth, but, you know, it, it's a decent enough look behind the scenes, and you get some deleted scenes and stuff on there, too. So that's, that's pretty cool. So, anyway, as a lifelong fan of Terminator, literally since the first one was the only one, um, I really enjoyed this. So, there you go. And then finally, last but most definitely not least, we have... The franchise that everyone loves equally and just can't stop talking about how much they love every single part of it. 
Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, as you guys know, I did a, 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 a video and some uh, streams on Saturday Night Insanity uh, vehemently defending The Last Jedi, and I still defend The Last Jedi. I think it's a wonderful film. Um, and by a similar token, I really liked this one too. I actually really enjoyed the sequel trilogy, and I thought they had some interesting ideas and went in some interesting directions with it. Uh, was it what everybody wanted? Obviously not. It seems to me that the, the only new Star Wars that fans seem to universally accept is the new Star Wars stuff that doesn't involve the classic characters. I think that's really the crux of the problem people had with it. They didn't like the fact that the sequel trilogy wasn't all about the classic characters and that they they didn't all sort of go off in directions that they wanted them to go off in. But, you know, whatever. You've got the EU, you've got the books, you've got the comics, you got all that stuff. If you want to see more heroic adventures of our original heroes in the movies, they decided to go in a different direction, and I'm okay with that. I enjoyed it. I was entertained. I liked the new characters. I liked seeing the old characters one more time. And, you know, whatever. Um, I also really liked Solo. I thought Solo was fantastic. It was, it, it, I mean, if any of them felt like old school Star Wars, it was Solo more than any of them, I think. Um, and, of course, Rogue One was great, too. But, um, I don't know. I, I like the sequel trilogy, so I, I don't have an issue with it. This is uh, the 4K Steelbook edition. It was a be uh, Best Buy exclusive. Very, very nice edition. I was very lucky to, uh, to get this. It was actually gifted to me, and uh, I'm I I supremely grateful for that. Um, so let's take a look at the uh, beautiful packaging here and the uh, selections of extras. And here we go. This is probably the most deluxe one I got out of all of today's Blu-ray editions. Very, very nice edition. And uh, as with most Star Wars uh, releases, there's actually quite a lot of featurettes on here. Um, which is quite nice. You can see all the different uh, stuff there. Uh, so, if we take this out, just give me a second here, open it up, and there we go, very nice, look at that, and inside, three discs, we got, uh, sorry, we got Blu-ray, 4K, bonus discs, let's just uh, pop these out and we'll Take a little look at them there. Better look at the 4K disc there. It's got Ray and Kylo. Or Ben, depending which scene you're watching. Spoilers. <laughs> and then there we go. Get the whole gang with Chewie in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon. I think that scene was in all the trailers and all the publicity stuff. It's just like, look, everybody's here. All of the new characters that everybody loves unanimously. Yeah, I know. Anyway, I liked it. Just putting everything back in there. There we go. And chunk. Yeah, I keep the J cards in a box of J cards and inserts. Well, not inserts, but uh, backings. So that will be going in there now that we've finally done this update video. And there you go. So yeah, um, after the just hugely negative response my last Star Wars video got, I basically just said, you know what, I am done with this fandom. I'm not going to do any more videos about it. I talk about the the movies with, you know, my close friends and stuff, but I'm not on any fan groups. Any that I had followed at some point, I have long since unfollowed. Um, the, the toxicity and vitriol in the fandom now is just, it has made it completely, just something I don't want to have anything to do with. I'm just so tired of the whole thing, like just the hate. And, and also the hypocrisy. Like when this came out, suddenly everybody was talking about what a great movie Last Jedi was. It's like, well, where the hell were you two years ago? You know, this is what I've been saying the whole time. 
and now suddenly everybody's on the last Jedi train and now it's fashionable to hate on Rise of Skywalker instead. It seems like it's just whatever the current movie is, that's what fandom's going to hate on. And then when the next thing comes out, it's like, oh, you know, that last one wasn't so bad. It's like, oh my God, just just shut up, all of you. Just shut up. <laughs> I'm so sick of it. Anyway, I liked it, okay? So sue me. Anyway, that's that. So... That is it for this update. As I said, a bit of a short one this time. Only had three new items to add to the collection. But uh, three good ones, uh, definitely. Very satisfied with all three of those. And we'll watch again. So if you'd like to add any of these to your collection, I will, of course, add Amazon links to the description below. I don't know how obtainable the uh, Star Wars Steelbook is by this point. But if I find a link for it, I'll throw it in the uh, description. If not, well... It's Star Wars. I'm sure you can find some edition of it somewhere. Um, but yeah, thanks to everyone who uses my Amazon links. I really appreciate that because it does support the channel very directly. And I really appreciate the support. Uh, so big thanks to you for watching. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors. Be sure to catch me on Twitch. I stream there just about every day. And I'll see you next time. Until then, sayonara. Yeah.